When choosing a domain name, there's a, a few things you need to take into account. Um, one is the extension of your domain name. So you may see a lot of ones say it's .info, .co.uk, .com, .au, all sorts of country names, uh, .edu. My advice is avoid all of those and only choose .com or if you can't get a .com, maybe look at .org, um, .net maybe, but they're not as popular. So just always try and go for the .com if you can. That, that would be first choice. The other thing is whether you're going to include hyphens within the domain name. So my-best-shoes.com. And this depends on your approach as to whether you're interested in your website ranking highly within the search engines or whether you're just going to rely on getting affiliates to promote it for you, in which case the rankings in the search engines are not as important. Um, this is far more readable, my-best-shoes.com, rather than all this one word, especially when you start stringing longer words together. But the search engines are um, not so keen on domain names with hyphens in and probably won't rank you as highly. Though there's, to, to be honest, it's quite a, a minor factor and it was not going to make that much difference. Um, my advice would be not to worry about it. If, if you can't get the domain name without the hyphens, then get one with the hyphens. Always, though, try and get the keyword in the domain name. So, in this case, you know, we've got shoes as part of the domain name. We've added some words before or we've add some words afterwards. That, that's a, a given. Um, try and make it as short as possible. And uh, again, this depends on your approach whether you're interested in getting it to rank highly for search engines. The approach we take in the Internet Marketing Empire is that we um, use a different method, really, of um, getting affiliates to do all our promoting for us. So once you've got your website there, you want to try and recruit as many affiliates as you can, and therefore you're not reliant on Google and Yahoo, etc., ranking your site in search engines in order to get traffic. So in that case, it doesn't really matter um, on the length. But if you are interested in SEO, then try and make it short. But as I said, you know, the length doesn't matter if you're going to be recruiting affiliates. The name name suggestion tools. There's one here. There's a, quite a few tools. If you go into Google and just type in the word domain suggestion tools, and you'll get heaps and heaps come up. Um, some of which are completely independent and others are tied to maybe a particular domain registration service. So have a look sh through the, the ones you like. But this is one that I've been using and it's called domain-suggestions.domaintools.com. Domain um, I'm just quickly going to go to that website and show you. Um, so if we were to type in, um, say, let, let's just move this down so you can see it's so if we typed in say mountain bikes and get suggestions you know put in some keywords and it comes up you know obviously mountainbikes.com is already gone and so is the debt net and org and info and biz and all these but if you have a look through it's made suggestions on all sorts of other domain names that are available um, based on the keywords you've typed in so we've got elevation bikes obviously it's getting elevation from the word mountain so it might not be what you're looking for and volcano bikes which you know is <laughs> quite a funny name to use but um, hey if you want volcanobikes.com it's t it's available so you know um, you, you can go and register it today but you know you, you get some other ones like great bikes um, how maybe not a great way of phrasing it but you, you get the idea that you know it's it's giving suggestions based on the keywords you've used. So it's a great tool to have a look. Um, so that was at domain-suggestions.domaintools.com. So what if you've been searching around looking for domain names and you're just banging your head against the wall because every domain name you're choosing is already taken by somebody else? Well, the, the first thing maybe is to look up the who is. Um, and if you go to betterwhois.com and type in the domain name, then you can see who that domain name belongs to. And you may want to try and contact the owner and see whether they're willing to sell it, especially if they're not using it. You come across a lot of domain names where they're just 
parked and they're not being used they've just got them sitting on the default hosting account or the default domain registration account they've not actually got any proper website contents um, it may be they've got plans to use it further down the road or maybe that they've had it you know two or three years and just never got around to using it and in that case they may be open to selling it you could try and make an offer directly but I recommend you go through a domain broker and these are the professionals because um, to buy a domain name you need to make sure that it's done using the um, agreed rules and regulations set by the uh, domain name industry and, and that is really that it's to protect both parties that, um, that nobody's going to run off with the money so the money gets put into a central pot until the uh, transfer is complete and then it's released if the transfer doesn't go through then it's uh, returned back to the, uh, the buyer um, but it also protects the transfer of the domain name and make sure that there's a number of stages it can go through when it transfers ownership from one person to another. Um, so if you were to use a professional domain broker such as sedo.com or godaddy.com um, or buydomains.com, there's many, many, again, you search in Google, then these will handle the domain transfer for you. And you'd, you'd have to put in a, a much higher offer than what it would be available if it was... Um, if you hadn't, if it's not owned by anybody else, and you would just to go to say a service such as Namecheap.com and find that that domain is available to to purchase, and typically it would be nine dollars there. But if a domain's already owned by someone else, they're gonna probably want a lot more than nine dollars for it, and you would maybe need to get some kind of um, evaluation as to what it's worth. And each of these sites provide. Um, um, analysis reports and evaluations they'll look at the domain name and judge what it's worth based on its market value and what what they believe it's worth so for example if if a domain name is worth one hundred dollars then they'll suggest that that you, you could go and buy it for one hundred dollars you know go, go and put in an offer to the owner see see whether they're willing to sell it in the next video we're going to go through how to actually register the domains and take you through all the the, the next steps then so uh, talk to you soon